Now, we had promised you this discussion, so let's jump straight into it. Professor Dire Tlaidi making history as the first South African to sit as a, as a judge at the International Court of Justice. Uh, Tlaidi, who's an international law professor from the University of Pretoria, began his nine-year term yesterday, basically, after being sworn in as one of the 15 judges at the ICJ. The United Nations General Assembly and the Security Council elected Professor Claddy last November after receiving his nomination from the South African government. Let's take you back to that historic moment as the swearing-in was happening. Take a look. And I call now on Judge Claddy. I solemnly declare that I will perform my duties and exercise my powers as judge honorably, faithfully, impartially, and conscientiously. <coughs> Thank you very much, Judge Paddy. Please be seated. Come at the hour, come at the man, they say. Professor Dire Tladi joining us now live from the Netherlands, uh, fresh from being minted as uh, one of the 15 judges now at the Hague. Professor Tladi, lovely to be speaking to you once again in different time zones this time, but I'll take it. <laughs> Congratulations are in order. I think that's the first thing to say. And look, it may be a pedestrian question, but I think it's an important one. How do you feel? Um, I, I feel excited. You know, I, um, uh, I'm glad that the swearing in and, and the ceremony is over, and um, I really feel excited to begin this new chapter, and, and, and I hope, as I've said to you before, twice, I think, um, um, I'm looking forward to making a contribution. So I'm really excited, but really excited just to sort of start um, uh, this thing that I've been looking forward for such a long time. Yeah, and we'll speak about what the work looks like in just a moment, but it's such a big moment for us here at home, and I imagine for you at a professional and personal level, it's going to be a day that you remember quite clearly. Um, are you able to just yes. take us through perhaps even what was going through your mind at the time of, of being in the Peace Palace, as it's being described, and uttering these words, this proclamation that you're making, not only, I imagine, for your, for your colleagues, but, you know, for the rest of the world as well. Yeah, in, in fact, I'll take you a couple of steps back. Um, I don't know if you noticed when I was walking in, because um, I was the first one to walk in, and I was told several times, um, we walk slowly here. <laughs> and I said, yes, 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 I walk slowly. Um, so, but I saw a video, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm way, way, way ahead. It seems I was walking really fast, and I think that's indication of how um, of how eager I was to get this over and done with. But at that moment, I think when um, the CVs were being read, I thought, yeah, this thing is really happening. Um, you know, this thing is, is 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 really really happening, and it's you know it was hard to believe. Um, but uh, again, because it's, it's 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 as I've told you before. Um, you know, it's something that I've I've I've, I've looked forward to. Um, um, you know, I knew it was happening, but it was also at the same time really hard to believe. Um, so exciting moment for me. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, many of us have kind of watched the journey from the moment when you had to, let's call it, make petitions uh, to the United Nations. I mean, you and I spoke when you're still in the Southern Hemisphere uh, at the University of Pretoria. And it, it was interesting to listen to you then, just the kind of clarity of mind you already had about the kind of contribution you want to be making at The Hague. And I, I wonder, given just how much has already taken place, whether that image has crystallized for you, um, especially because this is, this is really tangible, right? It's, it's really happening, to use your words. Yeah, I mean, it's really happening. Um, the the cases on 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 the docket of the court um, are just the kinds of cases that um, lend themselves to the kind of 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 um, you know of contribution that I'd like to make. There's been lots of times in the past when the um, the docket of the of the court was filled with boundary delimitation cases, and of course those are important, but. Um, but they don't lend themselves to, I think, the kind of sort of normative contribution that one would like to make. And I think with uh, the current docket, um, it's certainly a lot more exciting and it lends itself to, to, to the kinds of things that I'd like to uh, make a contribution to in terms of international law. Yeah. You know, the uh, ICJ, of course, has been in the headlines for all, all kinds of reasons recently. I mean, South Africa's involvement with Israel and Gaza. Um, mm -hmm. But... It's not only a court that settles disputes between states, which is the case with this genocidal yeah. intent case, but it can also issue out advisories, right, in, in you know, a context where any of the parties involved are looking for something like that. My understanding is that we really are hitting the ground running because one of those that you might be involved with is happening as, as soon as this month. 
Yeah, it's the 19th of February. So, so last year, um, the General Assembly requested um, the court to issue an advisory opinion on on um, the situation in Palestine. Um, it's broader than the South Africa genocide case because this one involves uh, the occupation itself. It involves questions of self determination, involves questions of international humanitarian law. Um, involves questions of apartheid. Uh, so it's a broader question that the General Assembly is saying to the court, uh, what are the legal consequences um, arising out of um, the uh, the prolonged occupation um, um, of the territories of Palestine by Israel? Um, and that's, that starts on um, the 19th of February, as I said. And so, um, so yeah, um, um, so really uh, uh, exciting. The, that particular case is not between two states. It's, it's an advisory opinion that's given to an organ of, of, of the United Nations, uh, in this case the General Assembly or some other competent international organization. Yeah. Um, you know, in South Africa, when they made the argument in that case, and I'm not conflating these two things, by the way, um, they had kind of pointed out that, you know, it feels like international law itself is at stake, like the standing of these organs, if um, we are to get this right, is possibly what's ultimately at stake here. And I wonder whether you feel that kind of burden on your own shoulders, right? Um, dare I say, perhaps five, ten years ago, there wasn't as much of a focus on the ICJ as there is today, despite how long-standing, by the way, the conflict in the Middle East has been. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's not... This would not be the first time that the ICJ has uh, has rendered an advisory opinion on the situation. There was an advisory opinion in the war in the war case um, uh, in uh, 2004. Um, so so the ICJ has had uh, you know has had its eye on, on the, um, um, to this kind of situation. Um, the ICJ um, also delivered an advisory opinion on on um, on. Um, the, um, the continued presence of South Africa in um, Namibia, Southwest Africa in the 1970s. So these kinds of cases are certainly not, not new to the International Court of Justice, and I think they're, they're, they're really important. Um, my, my own sense is, is that you know, the function of the court, the function of the 15 members of the court is to, um, you know, is to look at the situation um, you know, and apply the law uh, and to deliver the, um, the advisory opinion, and then it's up. It really is then up to the, uh, the organ that's requesting the advisory opinion to, uh, to use it in a way um, that's meaningful. But the function of the court in that sense is kind of limited. It's to say, here's what we think are the legal rules, and here's what we think are the legal consequences that flow from the legal rules. And then um, it's for the organs then to, uh, to see that they make use of, 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 of uh, that advisory opinion. Yeah. It's an important point to emphasize because, of course, uh much of the refrain back here at home is that, you know, you're a South African judge sitting at the ICJ. And that is true as an objective fact. But as a, as a judge, um, the obvious expectation is that you're not sitting there as a South African judge, right? You're sitting there as a member of the ICJ, one of the 15. Um, and, uh, you know, b because of the attention, as I mentioned, around what's taking place at The Hague, um, do you feel a greater responsibility to place an emphasis on that, you know, that the way you adjudicate in this matters isn't a far gone conclusion by virtue of your origin. Yeah, no, no, I mean, it's not. Um, it's not. And I, I, I don't feel a sense to sort of explain that. I, um, I think that that'll become a path that should be apparent. Um, you know, if it's not a uh, apparent. I hope uh, you know. Hope that others will explain that uh, that I am uh, uh, um, a judge, and, and as such, you know, I took that oath yesterday. Um, you know, to act impartially, uh, to act independently, conscientiously. Um, you know, um, uh, so so yes, I, I I I that's that's the expectation, and I hope everybody understands that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's. 24 minutes after 7 o'clock in the Netherlands. Early start for you today. Day one of you being a judge at the ICJ. What does your diary look like? Are we hitting the ground running? Um, actually, it's day two. Um, the first order of business was yesterday. We had our first meeting, and um, the, the, you may have seen that we elected a new, uh, a new president. Yeah. And we elected a new um, vice president, and, um, and I was elected onto some committees. So um, there are things that we don't think about. I certainly didn't think about them. There's um, the rules committee and uh, the, the budget and admin committee and uh, library committee and all kinds of committees. Um, and I was elected. I think I was elected to three committees. Um, 
Um, so that was the the first order of business. And then as far as today's concerned, it's, it's it's really one to meet with my team to talk about the the, uh, the OPT case. Um, um, and then to take some pictures for the website. Um, but, so, yeah, that's more or less what I did. Well, I hope you have your polls ready. And once again, a hearty congratulations from us, from the government, to civil society, no doubt members of the judiciary, all adding to the chorus. Absolutely well deserved. Professor Dieter Tladi, left to us there from The Hague in the Netherlands. Thanks very much indeed for your time.